Has this ever happened to you? You get a layer from a colleague that dabbles in GIS that they have digitized themselves and they ask you to clean it up. You open it up and this is what you see. That layer is full of gaps, overlaps, and sliver polygons, and you've got to clean it up. Well, I'm going to show you a tool and a method that's going to help make that process easier. In fact, it's one of my top five tools. When I discovered it, I wondered where it had been all my life. This tool is located on the... Wait a minute. YouTube's ratted you guys out and told me you leave right after I show you where the tool is. I do a lot of research into these things, so stick around. There's lots of tricky bits to this one. So stick around. This tool is located on the Modify Features pane in the Alignment group. It's usually used on a selection so you can either have the features selected when you launch the tool, or you can use this selection tool to make the selection after you've launched it. Or you can check this box and align features without a selection. You can see the selected features in this layer tree near the top. And it's always a good idea to give it a glance to make sure you're not aligning things that you want to stay put. You can collapse and expand each layer's features using these triangles. This feature in the very cleverly named Don't Move This Layer is one we don't want to be aligned, so we'll right click the layer heading and choose Unselect. Those other selection options can be useful too. Let's start out by showing you the basics, then we'll jump into the deep end later. These parcels are supposed to go to the center line of the road. We have a really good line for the center line, but those parcels are garbage. After making sure the features we want to align are selected, we click on the Draw Alignment Path tool. This launches the editing toolbar that gives you a bunch of constructor tools to help you create your alignment path. The default is the line tool. There are a bunch more you can expose by clicking these drop down arrows. I'm not going to go into all of these, but you can hover over them to see a tooltip as well as an explanation of how they're used. Now I'm going to use the trace tool to trace the road center line and click the green checkbox or press F2 to finish the path. Notice that because those parcels intersect the center line in a few places, my trace was messed up. Now I could be really careful while tracing, or I could do this handy little trick. Turn off the parcel layer, draw the alignment path while they're turned off, note the warning triangle in the layer tree saying the layer is not visible. That's fine because we'll turn it back on to make our adjustment. I've traced the path now, but my alignment button is still grayed out. I need to first specify a tolerance to find intersecting features. Once I enter value, my align button becomes active, and I see the alignment path now has a visual buffer to help me with my alignment. We could leave the parcel layer off and click on align, but we can't see whether our tolerance was sufficient to get the alignment right. So let's turn the layer back on. It looks like our tolerance isn't quite enough to cover everything. Let's click a line anyway and see what happens. That looks like a not so good heart monitor. I'm hitting undo to give that another shot. Unfortunately, we lose our alignment path when we undo the alignment. This time I'm going to show you an even cooler trick to draw your alignment path. Select the line constructor, right click on the road center line and choose Replace sketch. And boom. Chop that like button for that nugget of helpfulness right there. Now we'll increase our tolerance to 15 feet. All those zigzags are now covered in our buffer. Now we'll hit a line. If we edit the vertices of these, we see that the true curves of the center line were transferred to the parcels. Nifty. Now we're going to get into the guts of this tool. The methods section has different ways or <clears throat> methods of aligning the features. You saw the fit shapes to path method in the parcel example, where the parcels replicated the road center line's vertices. Let's try it again with these lines and points. 
Let's select our features, but this time I'm going to just digitize a wacky line using constructors instead of an existing feature. Specify a tolerance of 35 and hit a line. We see that any section of the lines that are within the tolerance duplicate the alignment path sketch vertex for vertex including curves. If only one vertex was inside the tolerance, that vertex jumps to the nearest point on the path, dragging the rest of the line with it. The points just jump to the closest point on the alignment path. I have these duplicate yellow lines and points to show you where the original features were located so you can see how each method affects the original features. Let's undo that alignment and select the Preserve Shapes Outside Alignment Area method and run it again. The angles of the original features are maintained. If we select one of these lines and activate the Edit Vertices tool, we see that a vertex was added at the point where the tolerance buffer intersected the line and the line was extended on its original bearing until it intersected with the alignment path. Cool. And note that the points aren't moved any differently with this method. Let's undo that method and run it again using the snap line ends to path method. We'll select our features again, use our trick of replacing the sketch, change the method to snap line ends to path, leave our tolerance at 35 and click a line. This method appears to rotate and stretch a line to get the end point to snap to the path. Make note of this line that wasn't affected by the alignment because none of its endpoints were inside the tolerance buffer. No vertices are added with this method. It grabs the endpoints and drags them over to the path. Also note that the points are treated like the endpoints of lines. Now let's move on to the area section. This affects the shape of the alignment buffer. In the side subsection you can control which side of the alignment path the tolerance will extend from. The default is both, but you can also use the left or right. These sides are determined by the direction the alignment path is digitized. It's as if you're standing astride the line facing the direction you digitize the line. The left side would be on your left and right on your right. The next subsection is how the end of the alignment path is buffered with the tolerance distance. Your choices are round, which is the default. This draws a portion of a circle at the end of your line with the radius of that circle being your tolerance. Or you can choose square, which will end the alignment buffer at a 90 degree angle from the end of the path. And finally, we have this allow aligning features without a selection option. Checking this box might save you the hassle of selecting features. If you want all of the features in the alignment buffer to be aligned, then this might be the way to go. You can still exclude features from the alignment by making them uneditable. Here you see the features in my line stay put layer didn't go anywhere because I have unchecked that layer in the list by editing tab in the contents pane. Now let's talk about how this tool saved me a ton of time when I was sent a zoning layer that was riddled with gaps and overlaps. It was digitized by a person that was unfamiliar with digitizing methods and they had digitized around each zoning area individually without using snapping. That's a very time consuming process even if you would have used snapping. That layer had been that way for years and it was fine because we had only used printed maps and those gaps and overlaps didn't show up when we printed those maps out. But once we started using that layer online, those gaps and overlaps started showing up because users could zoom way in and then start seeing those gaps and overlaps. So this is how I use the alignment tool to fix those gaps and overlaps in that polygon layer. I selected two contiguous polygons and then used the Align Features tool to trace a line between them. The alignment path would jump back and forth between following one polygon then the other. But that didn't matter because the aligned polygons ended up sharing the same boundary. 
Doing this saved me hours of painstakingly zooming way in, moving vertices and adding vertices, then snapping them to the adjacent polygon. I actually used to align features this way early on in my GIS noob years and wished I'd known about the alignment tool a long time ago. Have you had one of those aha moments where you find a tool that ends up saving you a ton of work and you wonder, where has this been my whole life? How come I haven't been using this tool all along? Let me know in the comments and I'll do a video about it. If you think this Align Features editing tool was cool, you need to check out this video about the Align Features geoprocessing tool. And if there's nothing there, it's because I haven't made that video yet. Thanks for watching to the end. You're truly an amazing, good looking person. I really went down the rabbit hole on this one for you guys, so go down and give that like button a firm chop for me. I'm out. Going to get a do.